Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryant, and we're happy to be with you. If you do not know us, we are the Redeemed Marriage. We love to share our story of redemption so that we can help marriages to have hope. And if your marriage is struggling, or even if it's not struggling, and you just need some encouragement and just want some marriage tips and advice from a couple that has lived through a lot of stuff, then this is the place for you. Yeah. And we're glad you're here. Yeah, we are glad you're here. And I think sometimes people may think, what makes them different from everybody else? Because we've seen there's lots of marriage stuff out there. Lots of... Some um, good stuff. Yeah, lots of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, there is good stuff. And a lot of that we listen to. Oh, yeah. Um, but, At least I do. <laughs> Oh, you just called me out. <laughs> and a lot of that you listen to. <laughs> Heather loves podcasts. How bad is that? You you do a podcast, a very yep. successful podcast, and you don't really listen to podcasts. I, but, yeah, I don't. I love but podcasts. But what I was going to say is... If you're listening and you're like, what makes them different from all of these others? Because there's some wonderful, amazing ones out there. Is that we don't have a book knowledge, just a book knowledge Mm -hmm. of how to walk through redemption and restoration. But it is literally our story. Um, 13 years ago, when I confessed to having an affair, um, there was nothing out there to be found on how to walk through it and walk through it in a God-honoring way. Um, But because of where God brought us, he's just put it on our heart to um, reach out and help other people Mm -hmm. in how they can walk through it well. And we, we, we didn't do it perfect, but, but it worked for us. Well, I think the thing that, that uh, makes our story a little bit different, a little bit special is it does come with that baggage and that experience. And so when we share the things that we share and the things that we learned, I mean, it's truly what we did. Right. And some of it worked, some of it didn't work. And so we've been able to go back and look through all of those things and sort of, I mean, there's, it's, it's a little bit of a roadmap yep. that we paved ourselves. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, you said it. We don't have the education. We don't have all the letters behind <laughs> our name. And I think that that's probably what attracts people to us. You know, this is uh, one of the things that we love doing is marriage coaching. And if you've never explored that, uh, we would love for you to go to our website, theredeemedmarriage.com, and just check out what we do with marriage coaching. And it's different from counseling. And so we, uh, in fact, we have done marriage coaching with lots of couples. We love it. And I would say that a large majority of the people that we do coaching Mm -hmm. with, they're either in counseling currently Mm -hmm. or have been in, you know, they've at least done some therapy, counseling, Mm -hmm. professional counseling, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome that they can do that and then go, we need something a little different too. Not that it's not that counseling's not working, so we got to try something right. else. It's like no, we we need to journey with somebody that's actually walked this road. Right, right. And a lot of people go to um, counseling one on one. So, like the wife will go to right. counseling, or the man goes to counseling. But this is something they can do together. Yep. And that's what makes this um, really unique and special. Mm. And even if you are going to marriage counseling as well, we try to look at how to move forward and how to walk successfully towards the marriage you've always wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's why even if you haven't really even experienced trauma Mm -hmm. and you just are like, man, we just need a, a couple to mentor us and journey with us. That's what we love doing. So anyway, that's, um, that was not, Not supposed the to be a sales pitch, but, <laughs> right. you know, it is. But I do want to go to to what you were talking about uh, when you said, you know, it's our story and it's it's what we journeyed through and we can tell our story. And I think one of the big parts of our story is that 
when everything came crashing down 13 years ago, uh, we had to learn how to do marriage the right way mm-hmm. or uh, the healthy way. Let's call it that. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe maybe people wouldn't look and say that's the right way to do it, but it's healthy. And the things that we learn create helped us to create a healthy marriage that we're living 13 years later. And I think that a big, big shift in that we talk about communication a lot and mm-hmm. how we learned how to communicate. And I think part of that really goes back to we're going to, for lack of better terms, we're going to call it fighting. Mm hmm. And and we we actually had a a call with our um, with our mentoring our community mentoring mm-hmm. group that uh, that we have a program for when you finish marriage coaching you can move into our marriage mentoring group and last month we talked about fighting with them and we had them actually submit definitions of what a marriage fight is. And, and I think that's part of the reason why we have a hard time really communicating about, Fighting is because people have such a huge uh, difference in thought of what a fight yeah, is. Uh, what that definition is yeah. of fighting. Yeah. yeah, because because some people would say, oh, well, it's when my spouse and I get into an argument. Mm-hmm. Some would say, oh, no, it's when we're throwing things and cussing at each other. Mm-hmm. You know, that sort of, like, the there's this just this extreme. Mm-hmm. And some people would say it's when we completely ignore each other. You know, it's yeah. like we're in a fight, and so we don't talk. Yep. And so if you're listening to this, you may be thinking to yourself, gosh, we fight all the time. Mm-hmm. But somebody else might look at what your definition of fighting is and go, oh, y'all never fight. Mm-hmm. We fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of hard for us to just nail down, this is what we're talking about. We're just talking about the fact that there is conflict in every marriage, and that is natural. We we heard in our sermon this morning at church that couples disagree on sixty percent of of everything. everything. 60% of everything. Perceptions. 60% of what they perceive is different. Yeah, is different mm-hmm. from from their mm-hmm. spouse. Yep. So if you're living with a spouse, if you are living with your spouse then you're under the roof with somebody that you already disagree with 60% of life. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That is. And and that's way bigger of a percentage than I would have thought. But then there's some people out there that's like just 60. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But But it makes you, it just, it sort of hits home because you can go, okay, well, sure, we're going to have conflict. Mm -hmm. And so, so what I want what what I would like for us to talk about today is how do we start moving away from letting those conflicts escalate mm-hmm. escalate, escalate 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 into into full blown arguments, fighting, mm-hmm. you know, you can describe it however you want to describe it, but it's basically we need to learn how to communicate well so that conflicts are handled in a healthy manner rather than moving into something that's unhealthy. That's right. I mean, it, it kind of gives me the picture of um, dynamite where you can light a fuse and you have a minute to figure out how you're going to handle that. And if you can defuse it, then the dynamite doesn't explode. It doesn't wreak havoc and cause destruction. Um, but if you don't handle it correctly, then, you know, that dynamite keeps going. That's where, actually, a good, <laughs> that I is actually, <laughs> where did, where did you come up with that God one? God just gave that to me. I, I tell, like it. I tell you I like 90% it. of the stuff I, like I say. It. So conflict is, is, uh, <laughs> is sort of like the lighting of the fuse. Yeah. And then it's, okay, are we going to let this thing completely blow up mm-hmm. or are we going to figure out how to diffuse it before right. the bomb right. goes off that's right. I like that Actually. so that's what, so that's what we're talking about because you may have decided to listen to this podcast because somewhere in the title of this thing it's going to be something like we you know we fight we fight mm-hmm. we fight all the time or we can't stop fighting mm-hmm. or I don't know what we're going to call it but we'll see so we talked about how at the beginning of this Heather said we have a story we have an experience and pre-confession, pre-infidelity, there was 15 years of conflict. Mm-hmm. And 
looking back on it, we realized how unhealthy we handled conflict in our marriage. Now, if you would have asked me 15 years ago before everything came out, do y'all fight very often? I don't know that I would have said yes. But when I look back on it now, I think, yeah, we might have just kind of been in conflict a lot, and we just never handled it in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And I think that looking back, um, I see that we had a lot more conflict than um, either one of us really knew until we see it now and go, ooh, yeah, that wasn't healthy at all. Yeah. So I think we've talked a, we've talked some about conflict and how we've ha- how we handled conflict in the wrong way, um, but but I think that's what we need to do is we need to talk about the ways that we handled it wrong. Okay. Well, first of all, I think that we both had an unhealthy picture of conflict coming into our marriage. R- yeah. Now before you go, oh, I know their parents and they're fixing to talk bad about them. No, we both had amazing parents. Mm-hmm. Um. And, but, and and I think it was partly a generational thing as well, um, but that we never saw them fight. Like, I never saw my parents fight, ever. They just didn't have disagreements. They didn't talk through conflict with, in front of us at all. Um, It just, I, I guess they did that behind closed doors and, or had discussions once we were asleep or whatever. So the first time that we had a disagreement um, when we got married, I was like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. something's ro- like really wrong with us because we got into a fight mm-hmm. and or a disagreement. And so I think that played a role in how we started to handle yeah. our conflict. And we didn't want to handle it big and we didn't want to handle it loud because we had never seen that demonstrated. And so I used... um I manipulated you pretty easily into always making it your fault. And you got so tired of it being your fault, you just apologized. Mm -hmm. You were just like, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Um, Mm -hmm. And what's so weird is we dated for seven years. So we had conflict. Yeah. And we had, we fought during dating. But I think that we just thought that was gonna end when we got married when we got married yeah, sure and i don't know that anybody was real honest with us mm-hmm. about you know the conflict that you have when you're dating it just grows and magnifies right. when mm-hmm. you get married i don't think we ever got that from people we do premarital counseling now <laughs> yeah and we tell them and we, that <laughs> we tell them that hey whatever bugs you about her it's gonna bug you a million times worse <laughs> when you get right. when you get married. it doesn't go That's away right. it's not That's like right. it stops Um, but I, yes, I think. And now everybody wants to come do premarital counseling with us. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. Uh, Well, hey. Just scared everybody off. (laughs) Hey, we just shoot straight. We tell it like it is. Um, but I do think that we, we had arguments, we had fights, but we were expecting it to just magically be Be different Mm -hmm. when, when we got married. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was probably like, uh, we'll just, yeah, I mean, but by living together, it's not going to, mm-hmm. those things are not going to mm-hmm. happen. So, mm-hmm. yes, you're right. When we started having disagreements and conflict, we didn't know how to handle it because mm-hmm. it had not been modeled right. Right. And so some of you may be on the camp of, well, we don't want to fight in front of our kids. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. If you know how to fight correctly and if you know how to handle arguments and disagreements in a healthy way, then it's okay to do that in front of your mm-hmm. kids because they need to learn that mom and dad have disagreements, but they handle them and they work them out. Now, we we would say don't ever don't ever let the temperature rise in front of mm-hmm. your kids. Right. You know, you need to be able to handle conflict, talk it out, and even if your kids see it, that's okay. Um, but anything that becomes scary to your mm-hmm. children or where they might question and say, oh, are y'all going to get a divorce? Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing is is traumatic for a kid. Sure. And so you have to be, be careful there. Um, but you nailed it when you said arguments and disagreements would come because 
I mean, I don't think you had any trouble telling me mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And my response was always, well, I know where this is going. There's no way I can explain myself and be any kind of right, so I'm just going to go ahead and apologize. Right. It's like the old man that wakes up in the morning and says, I'm sorry, and his <laughs> wife says, what for? For everything, everything. I'm going to do wrong <laughs> today. I mean, that's how I felt sometimes. And so, And then on the flip side of that, if I ever let something just fester enough inside of me where I felt like I needed to come and finally tell you about it, I, I mean, even looking back on it now, I'm like, why, 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 did, why did I ever even do that? Because I knew where it was going to go. It was going to come back to, I mean, you, first of all, you probably weren't really listening because you were just thinking of how you were going to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And then once you figured out how you were going to defend yourself, it was how am I going to twist this around to where it's actually your right. fault. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how our crazy cycle of arguing happened through the first 15 years of marriage. And so... What we had to do beyond that or past that, once we figured out, hey, we're, we are not communicating in a healthy way, then we had to learn how to do it the right way. Yeah. You know, one of the things, it's funny how we've been talking about fighting for about a month post our um, mentoring session. And then our pastor this morning, his sermon was not just on this point, but he mentioned this point, And I was like, that applies so much to what we're talking about today. And he said that if you have conflict, it shows a level of, I mean, it can show a level of spiritual immaturity when you fight a lot. Like everybody has conflict, so don't hear me say that. But if you're fighting a lot or if you're getting in disagreements with people at work and you change jobs and you're still in disagreements with people at work, you know, he even said, you're the common denominator mm -hmm. in that. But it shows a level of... Um, it can show spiritual immaturity. And what and then he went on to say that if you can never be wrong, that's immaturity. Mm -hmm. If you cannot realize that you can be wrong and allow people to speak into your life, then that is being spiritually immature. Like we all have a level of hate you need to have some truth spoken into your life. And and I think that if you're in a place, which I definitely was from the beginning of our marriage until 15 years ago or 13 years ago, where I could never be wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you tried to speak into that truth, it just flew all over me and it caused a complete disagreement and a complete argument because I was like, you're wrong. I mean, you're wrong. I can't be wrong. Mm -hmm. And that sounds so incredibly harsh looking back on it, but there are people in their marriages mm -hmm. that they're like, yep, that's my spouse or yep, that's me, mm -hmm. that I just can't be wrong. Well, it's like when he said in the sermon, you know, you're out there looking for Mr. Right. And then when you find Mr. Right, you find out his first name is Always. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was and, funny. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's people listening right now, and they there's probably more people that are listening that, are, that probably go, ooh, that's me. Like, I mean, I, I do. I think that there's people that are listening that's like, hmm, yeah, I, I have a real problem with that. Um, or you're listening and you're going, oh yeah, that's my spouse. Yeah. My spouse is never, is never wrong. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, let's camp there for just a second. And here's what I want you to do since that, that was you. And that's sort of how, I mean, you're, you're bent more that way. You're not that way now, but I think that sometimes that, that old fleshly part of you, mm -hmm. of course, comes up and how do you handle that now? So tell tell the person that's listening that's like, yeah, I have a hard time. The reason why our arguments are not handled in a healthy way is because I'm not usually wrong. Yeah. Um, I would say that the first thing that I always try to do is to ask God to show me truth. Um, like in the moment, I'll say, God, show me truth. 
because I think so many times the enemy wants us to not see truth and go ahead and say, yeah, you're right. I'm right. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm right. You're wrong. Um, And I always try to see, um, I try to see it through the lens that would be God honoring and how I respond. And so I say in my head, I mean, I know, like I say this all the time, God, show me truth and help me handle it in a way that's honoring to you. And sometimes, and this is not just with you, in conflict in any area of life, sometimes that's speaking a hard truth to someone. It's not always being mild and meek and backing off. You know, there's there's times where I ha- in speaking truth, you're doing that in love. Mm-hmm. But, but most of the time, it calls for putting a guard over your mouth or to speak in a way that is gentle and God-honoring mm-hmm. and not selfish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, I... So that's something I constantly battle where it's like, help me to see truth, help me to speak in a way that's God honoring, um, help me to honor you as my husband while we talk and, and just making sure that I turn off the little robot in my head. That's always saying, what about me? What about Mm -hmm. me? What Mm -hmm. about me? What about me? What about me? Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's, that's the flesh. Your flesh is saying, yeah, but what about me? Yeah. And so just making sure that voice is turned off and listening through the right lens. Well, I think a big part of it is just listening. Yeah. And, you know, we have an incredible tool that we're not going to go into today, but Mm -hmm. the heart talk. And if you let us do marriage coaching with you, we can (laughs) just, we do, we do go over the heart talk, but it's, uh, it is an important tool for communicating Mm -hmm. because that person that is really bent towards I'm always right, when you have to listen, Mm -hmm. it just, it diffuses a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so let's flip it around real quick, and let's come back to the person that I was, and the person that I was, and I still have, I still have a bend towards this, is to not want conflict, and because I don't want conflict, I keep things inside, Mm -hmm. don't come to you and talk to you about it as, as I should. So it becomes bitter sometimes. And then if I, if you come to me, it's also the, I I just want to get out of this Mm -hmm. and I'll just say, I'm sorry. And so, you know, we were saying how unhealthy it is to be the person that's, I'm always right. I'm always right. But it's also unhealthy to be the person that just wants to completely get out of every conflict and not and not resolve anything. Now, every conflict doesn't have to have a resolution, but there's some of you out there listening that's just like, oh, I hate conflict, so I'll just do anything. I mean, I'll do anything to stay out of it. And that means never bringing anything up that's bothering me, you know, never speaking to my spouse about difficult topics, And when my spouse comes to me, instead of actually having a conversation about whatever it is, it's just, oh, I'm sorry. My Mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. Which is a peacekeeper. Yeah. Not a peacemaker. Yeah, that's right. But just a peacekeeper. Like, I'm just going to avoid it. I'm not going to talk about it just to keep the peace. Yeah. Instead of somebody who comes in and tries to make peace, you know, with, with how you handle it. Well, and as we were learning how to communicate through um, all communication, when we were learning this as we were healing and restoring our marriage, the the key word was safety, mm-hmm. and it was it was just we we need to both be a safe place to each other, to where I know, like even though I don't like talking about hard things a lot of times, because honestly, a part of it is is that I am. Uh, like I, um, I self reflect and I do so much internal processing. I don't have, there's a lot of people out there that everything processing is external. I'm more of an internal processor, which means I can take things and I can deal with them internally. And most of the time it causes me to, well, I don't even need to bring it onto the, onto the outside. Um, but at the times that I do feel that need, I know that I can do that. I know that I can come to you and it's not going to blow up. 
Um, and then for you, you also know that you can talk with me, and now I'm going to be much more honest mm-hmm. and really, I mean, blunt, brave, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, uh, because I don't, I don't feel the need to just always say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Right, right. You know, sometimes when people, when you talk about fighting and conflict, you think about, um, I hear this word a lot, a lot that you get into the crazy cycle of fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, we always are fighting about the same things over and over and over again. And even no matter what the outside thing is that's causing it, it still gets to the root of what you always fight about. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, it could be talking about money, but then it's hitting the core root of your fear of not being enough. Mm -hmm. And so then that spurs on this crazy cycle that you fight. Um, For example, I think our crazy cycle that we were in all of the time is I didn't feel loved. That's what I kept saying. I don't feel loved. I don't feel like you love me. Um, And because I wasn't feeling loved, then that would trigger actions in me that would make you feel um, disrespected. And so because I didn't feel loved, I didn't respect you. And so I could blame it on you. Well, he doesn't love me. He doesn't treat me right. He doesn't, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so that's going to make me disrespect him. And so then you would feel disrespected which sent you right back into not loving me well, because who wants to love somebody well if they're disrespecting you all the time? Mm -hmm. And now there were outside things that we could say, oh, but the fight was about this, or it was about this, or it was about this. But it always came back to those roots of conflict of I didn't feel loved. And I mean, that could even have nothing to do with how you were treating me. It was just what I was desiring and wanting inside and you weren't meeting that. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, then I didn't make you feel um, respected. And so that, that, that cycle just kept going over and over and over again. And so I know that people are listening, thinking about the arguments and fights that they get in and they're like, it's the same thing Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And so it's figuring out what those issues are Mm -hmm. and then breaking that cycle. Yeah. You know, like what is it when you argue that you, what's, what's really the Mm -hmm. the core issue? What's, what is that? Well, and for most couples, it is love and respect. It's love for the, the wife and respect for the husband. That's why there's actually a book that was titled (laughs) Love and Respect, and that's what it's about. And it's pretty much that's the core for most couples, and that's why they get in that crazy cycle. So you nailed it, and you probably didn't even really realize that. That was just our story. Yeah, because those were our two two triggers in arguments. And so... Not only did we get stuck there, but we got stuck in the role playing of I'm going to make it your fault and you're going to apologize. I'm going to tell you what you did wrong and you're going to apologize. Oh, you want to tell me what I did wrong? Watch this. You were wrong. Now apologize. I mean, that was our the crazy cycle of our fights over and over again. But once we started learning to listen to each other and to just freaking admit that I can be wrong. That was the hardest bond to break. The hardest chain to break was for me to realize that I wasn't always right. And I know that sounds so like I hear myself say that and go, that's awful. I mean, that was awful, but it was a lie that I believed. It was, it was a lens that I was looking through that was not truth. Mm -hmm. Of, yeah, I mean, that's not, that's not on me. This one's not my fault. You know, it was just a constant blame shifting to somebody else, but all the time it was your fault. Mm -hmm. You you know, what do you think this is, I'm going to ask this, I need to, this needs to be kind of the last thing, but there's a lot of people, and I think that there's a lot of people, guys and girls out there, or husbands and wives that are out there, so that are in a situation where it's like eggshells, like I'm, you know, walking on eggshells as far as 
I feel like I need to talk to this about my spouse, but if I do, I know what's going to happen. And not only is it like I know what's going to happen, but it's it's going to disrupt the mood of the house maybe for days. Mm-hmm. Like we've even had people tell us yeah. that. Like it like a like something will happen and then it causes this 3-day shutdown or and so sometimes the person that doesn't like conflict they're just like, well, I'm not gonna say, I'm not saying anything because I don't want to spend the next three days in the doghouse, right? Mm-hmm. Just for bringing something up that I probably should bring up. So, if look, look, this may be really hard to answer. We probably shouldn't have opened this can of worms here this last <laughs> the, for the last uh, couple of minutes. But let's just rewind it and hit pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really. And just, thanks for joining us. <laughs> marriage podcast. But let's just say that there's a couple, that there's somebody out there that's listening to this and um we're going to rewind it 13 years and you are you're that person that that you know you're a self-admitting it's walking on eggshells around me in our marriage. What do I do in a situation like that? How in the like how can I even start the process of approaching you because I think that there's people out there that are going, oh, those are great. Those are great things. Great, y'all are y'all are awesome. How am I gonna? How am I? How am I ever supposed to talk to my spouse about this? Because even this is walking on eggshells with my spouse, and so I don't want to go to them and say, hey, go listen to this podcast, <laughs> please. Or you know, I mean, just hey, I want us to. I just want us to do a better job of communicating and fighting in a healthy or you know conflict in a healthy way because that is scary to somebody like me 13 years ago that's scary to even bring that up to somebody like you Mm -hmm. so what do you say like (laughs) help me help me help those people what do you do yeah, you're not going to like my answer. <laughs> you're going to say suck it up, no, buttercup. No, exactly. I mean, there I mean, we talk a lot about how to talk to your spouse about hard things. I mean, this is one of those areas where it's like I mean, it needs to look like a heart talk where you go and you talk to them about about Um, what is hurting you and what's bothering you and that you're not expecting them to fix it. You're not expecting them to um, apologize. You just need to tell them that this is how you feel um, around them. But what I was going to say is um, that you're not going to like is you can't fix your spouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't like, Yes, there has to be something that's done, but they, you're not going to say the magic words to where your spouse says, oh, my gosh, you are right. For 30 years, I've been doing this wrong, mm. and all you had to do was tell me. You know, I mean, it's not a magic pill or a yeah. magic phrase that you can say, but I do think that it's important to go to them and say, you know, every time we communicate, this is how I feel. And I think that this is an unhealthy pattern and I want us to try to work on this together because if you go into it where you're saying, this is you, you make me feel this way. You don't handle conflict, right? You, you know, when we talk, you're always the one that's getting bad, it mad. If you're you, 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 and it's not going to go well. Yeah. But if you say, you know, Hey, I think this is something that we really could improve on. And that we could um, start to do better in. And I want to talk about what it looks like to have a healthy conversation or healthy conflict in a marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to go way better. I mean, it's still going to be scary because I was scary. I was a scary person for you to try to come to. I was not a safe place. Mm -hmm. And if you have a spouse that's not a safe place, then it's going to be scary. But... But you're opening the door to and asking them to consider the fact that your communication is not how it should be and that you think there's a better way to communicate Mm -hmm. and a healthier way to communicate if you could just talk about it and, and discuss. But I also think the most powerful thing that you can do is pray for your spouse Mm -hmm. and pray for them to see 
the brokenness in the way that you fight. Yeah. And ask God to open their heart to that, open their mind to that, break them of that. Because, like I said, it's not something you can fix. Like, I can't imagine you coming to me and saying, hey, you don't do great in communicating and you always make it my fault and me responding well to Right, that. that's right. I mean, I would <laughs> right. not have responded well right. to that. No, I think that I think that some of the things that you mixed into that answer, I think were really, really good points that um, that anybody could could try. And I think the biggest it's it's all in the approach and it's all in um you know, the thing is, when there's something that's on your mind and you need to talk, you really just want to be heard. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you want there to be some some change or improvement, but but initially it's just, I need you to hear this. Mm-hmm. And so in order for them to be in a spirit of just listening, like you said, don't, don't go, you can even go and say, hey, I don't need you to I'm not expecting you to fix fix this or for me or whatever. It's it's more of I I love what you said. It's it's this. Hey, I've really been thinking just a lot about how our marriage can just be the best that it can be. Not even saying how our marriage can be better because yeah. that's you saying our marriage isn't good enough because of you. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we're gonna fix some that's things. Right. That's right. But it's you know I've been really investing a lot of time in, you know, thinking about how awesome our marriage really can be. And like, I want to be that spouse for you. Mm -hmm. And part of it is getting out of this rut of, you know, unhealthy conflict and communication. So one of the things that, and I'm not expecting you to, I don't want you to fix it. I just just want to share this with you. Like, like just approaching it that way, Mm -hmm. it's very, um, I mean, disarming. It's, it's disarming, and it's putting that it's putting that fuse out yeah. before it ever before has a ever chance to light. And light. I will say too, and I know we're over time, but I do want to say too that if you go, if you make a big deal about it, about it, it's not going to go well. Yeah. Like if you're like, hey, once we get the kids yeah. to bed, we need to have a conversation. We need to have a talk. We need. I just need to talk to you. No, no, no. You didn't do anything. I just need to. T- uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. It, they're yeah. gonna come in defensive. Yeah. They're gonna be like, okay, what I do now. Yeah. But if you're on a walk. Yeah. Or if you're just fixing dinner and it's the two of y'all, whatever, where it's just a casual yeah. conversation of, hey, I've been thinking about this and I think we could do a great job in this area, or I think it could be an area. Um, where we could do better, or mm-hmm. whatever. I know you said to avoid saying. We could do better, but it's just an area that I think we could we could crush. You know, we could do good at this. We just need to try a little bit and yeah. try something different. Yeah. You know, yeah. where but if you make it a big deal, it's going to be a big deal. It mm-hmm. doesn't need to feel heavier yeah. than than it should be for an initial conversation where you just want to be heard. Yeah, I mean, and that can go for anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be. We need to talk about how we. C- how we have conflict. I mean, it yeah. could be anything. Ooh, right. Ooh. Um, sorry. I just banged that. That's okay. okay. That was our gong telling, <laughs> us, to, telling us to be quiet. <laughs> All right. right. Um, no, I think it's a great conversation to get started. We just, uh, there's couples out there that have tons and tons of conflict. And I want you to know that Heather and I, we have conflict, mm-hmm. but we don't really fight. Because we have learned so much. Now, there are some times that we get hurt feelings and things happen because, again, 60% of life we mm-hmm. don't agree on, probably. Yeah. Um, but we just don't, We the fuse never gets to a bomb, by yeah. and not even close, really. Um, and so much of that is because of the things that we learned through our journey. So, all right, I hope this helps. And uh, we're going to sign off, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.